Hi everybody, Dr. C ringing in here in Mod 2. I just want to cover a few things about what we did or covered, what was supposed to have been done during Mod 2, and what you can expect this week. This will be not. This won't be the only say announcement or messaging that I'll be bringing to the table. I am considering uh, inviting everyone to a synchronous Adobe Connect webinar and or a conference call for anyone who has questions about what needs to be done and how best to do it. Uh, one of the stipulations in the rubric for the final project submission and approval assignment, mod one, was you needed to email me, uh, email your topic to me before you complete the worksheet. I've only heard from one student, and we worked for about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so or half an hour on the phone, trying to whittle down and pare down, simplify, and make her particular topic uh, manageable. Okay? Uh, it's an excellent choice, but these things can grow out of control quickly. You don't have a lot of time. And also, you have to be very accurate in your writing. I'm going to keep preaching that consistently. So if I see any writing issues, gang, I'm going to refer you directly to the Writing Center. I, I'm going to guide you on structure and format, help you, you know, pare down your ideas so they're manageable. But if I see there's issues in terms of your, your writing is not clear. In other words, you need to make me clearly understand what it is you're trying to say. You need to convince me so I can comprehend it, and then I can help you with it. I'm also the blank slate. I'm your student. I want you to teach me about this. You're the expert in the area. We have some uh, people in here with a tremendous amount of experience. But at the end of the day, it, unfair as it may seem, we are judged by the words that we use, and we have to be accurate. This is not, I'm not going to say this is a writing course, but this is certainly a writing discipline. It's a writing profession. And I'm here to help you get better at it. Some people have tremendous writing skills. Okay, and that's fine too. I oftentimes will, will reach out to those students in a course that are writing quite well, very clear, very accurate and precise, and I will um, ask them if they wouldn't mind volunteering their work as an exemplar so you get an understanding of what this looks like and how you should be preparing, writing, and putting things together. One of the, one of the, one of the exercises of the calisthenics of good writing behind good writing is reading. So make sure that you've read in the book, which is a really good book. I mean, you know, books as they are, textbooks can be somewhat drab and droll and full of information that might be boring, but you need this stuff, and it is relevant to our profession, okay? Because here's the bottom line. We, we see problems, we investigate problems, we postulate, we pontificate, and we say why, and we theorize as to why something's happening. We do the research, we get the data together, we get what people have said together, we get experiences, we put it together in a research design, and the results may or may not result in the development of a process or a program, a diversion program, a drug court, okay, a domestic violence clinic, as an example, okay, deployment strategies, you know, that preempt criminal activity. So what the authors have written in this book is directly related to our job. So make sure you understand what they're talking about when they wrote when, uh, in terms of how to design, how to design the research project, getting ideas about it. Okay, the readings provide information again on why it is necessary to include data-driven facts to pose research questions and help familiarize you with the topic. If you're going to go before somebody with a checkbook, you better have your numbers together and you better be clear. And that's what this course is designed to help you with in relationship to the Capstone CJ480, okay? So this is very good. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've got a lot of people that have been crime analysts in this course and the Capstone course, and they really applaud the level of requirements, content, and information. All right, so make sure you do that. You get a hold of me, call me, email me, let me know what you're looking at, what you're investigating. Look at the rubric. I can't read it to you. There are some suggested topics in there. If you don't want to use one of them, that's fine. I'll work with you on it. I want to follow your passion. Mod 2 this week. Make sure you jump into your group discussion board. Any issues, technological or otherwise, let me know. Okay? I hope they're functioning okay. If not, I'll get in there and fix it. Um, they are good. I need to see a healthy exchange of ideas. You're all very bright people. I saw a tremendous level of passion and investment in the first discussion board. It was outstanding. I learned a lot. It's nice to see what your way your thinking is and what your approaches are, what you consider to be important to you, you know, as a person either in the field or looking to get involved. Okay? Anyway, so make sure that you read 96 to 103. Go through it. It's very clear. It's very accurate. 
Uh, I just can't tell you how it's a very good book. It's well written. Units of Analysis and Measuring Crime. We measure crime. When I was on the job, they had, we changed over from the UCR, which you see in there, to the NIBRS system, okay, which is a much more detailed, a highly, a much, uh, it actually culls more data from each and every event or assignment or activity or crime that an officer will attend to when they fill out the various fields. So it's a, it's a very, uh, it gives us a, a lot of good data that helps get, gets fed into a larger system, okay, which then provides data for further analysis investigation and research so we can come back and try to solve some of these darn things right we need all right, so the reading again provides information on how to identify trends and measure specific crime types all right it also will assist you in identifying contemporary criminal criminological theories related to the trend which is why that's the question right why is this happening all right we need also to understand the importance of and the required work involved in writing a clear an understandable research question. Researchers should begin, that would be you, by identifying a broader subject of interest, right? Mod 1, that lends itself to the investigation. For example, a researcher may be interested in uh, fentanyl distribution in a particular geographic area. Why does that pop into my head? Because we have an absolute epidemic here in the city where I was a police officer, actually statewide. Hundreds and hundreds of people have died over the last two, three, four years. We saw it coming, okay? Once crack uh, crack gave way to heroin, which gave way to opiates, which gave way back. No, it's just a vicious cycle. Anyway, the next step is to do preliminary research, which means you have to read, gang. Get into that Shapiro library. It's excellent, all right? If you get stuck, hit Google. It's fine. It'll help you. But you got to remember, the, the, the larger the topic, the more general the topic, you know, the, the more unwieldy the results will be, it'll just get too much. And where do you begin? You know, especially when you're leading busy lives. So if you have a problem about researching things, that's called information literacy, on the library, chat, connect with a the librarian. They will help you. We have a great library, one of the best e-libraries I have ever seen. I've been affiliated with a number of different online universities and colleges, and it's, this is probably the best I've seen. So... Questions you need to ask. How much research has been done on, say, domestic violence? What type of studies have been done that are examining the various issues that affect or impact or are part of domestic violence, right? Now, is there a unique area that you need to, that you think needs to be investigated? Or is there a particular question that uh, may be worth asking again? Then you begin to narrow your topic down by asking open-ended how and why questions. Right, and I always do that. If you call me and say, hey, I'm looking at this, I'm going to ask you how and why. I'm going to say, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. Let's look at one particular isolated component of this problem, all right, and then what type of theories we're going to apply, okay, how are we going to measure this, and what's the best research strategy? And we're going to go after this and figure out what's going on. For example, a researcher may, as an, as an example, may want to consider the factors that are contributing to the abuse of opiates or the success rates of intervention programs, Okay. Then you create your list of potential questions for consideration, brainstorming, getting it out there, and choose one that interests you and provides an opportunity for exploration. All right? So you create the list of potential questions, you know, brainstorm, and you can brainstorm with me, and I'll help you. It's always good to bounce these ideas off of off your first reader or your, your, your research chair. That would be me, but I'm also your audience. Convince me and help me to help you. So that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, I will be posting more announcements. I'll be again. I'm going to look to see if we can put together maybe a conference call, uh, whatever works, so we can start generating these things. Again, don't forget to get into your group discussion board this week. Great discussion posts. Uh, Mod one, thank you very much. A lot of enthusiasm. Very bright people. Plan your time, gang. Plan your time. This is a a, re, a pretty heavy course. I'm not trying to scare you off. And I was like, yeah, but it's a heavy course. It's a 300 level university course. All right. And I don't, I, I want you to understand something. I'm here to make sure that you are, you will become, if you're not already there, the best communicator, the best writer, the best, say, researcher for our industry that you can possibly, possibly be. I don't want you to leave this course deceived. Okay? All right? If you get an A, great. I never know what that really truly means. Does an A mean you know everything? I would think not. I know we love getting great grades. But we also want to make sure that we know enough to be able to apply successfully. 
to what we're looking to do, whether it's fill out a job application, whether they're really knocking out of the park in a job interview, okay? Those types of things. So th there are assets that are completely relevant in this course to our job in the criminal justice system, and I mean that. And I'll continue to do what I can to draft out you know, the correlation between content and relevance is really, really, really super important. You understand this is not just some sort of course that you have to claw your way through. There's a lot of relevance in this course relative. In fact, this whole course is entirely relevant to our profession. So I want to thank you guys for working so very, very hard. Again, keep our Florida contingent of students and, and, and faculty uh, in your thoughts and prayers. You know, we don't know which way this storm is going, but it's uh, it's a big one. So thank you very much for your support. Any information? I mean, yeah, okay. Any questions you may have, give me a shout anytime. You have my number, 603-858-3817, and I will help you. If I miss your call, leave me a good, uh, a good number to call you back on. Thank you, and have a great Sunday evening.